Hello everyone, my name is Akar. I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, today I'll be talking about our work on millimeter wave approach to tire wear sensing. This is work done in joint collaboration with a fellow PhD student of mine, Vaibhav Singh, and my advisors, Varun Kumar and Anthony Rowe. Wheels have been the main tool for transportation throughout the history of mankind. Today, as the number of people moving from one place to another skyrockets to something that we have never witnessed in the past, and with the advent of autonomous driving, safety and performance of these vehicles are extremely important. It's important that they are aware of themselves and their surroundings. As a step towards that, our interest is in ensuring that the automobiles are aware of their tires. Because tires are the only part which actually touch the terrain, any terrain impact can be sensed by measuring and monitoring the health of the tires. Today, building tires involves extreme engineering all the way from designing those tread patterns for optimal contact with the road to inserting steel belts for structural integrity to deciding what the compound of rubber should be. The industry tailor designs and offers tires specific to each application, be it passenger, truck or agricultural. The costs of these vary from hundred dollars to hundreds of thousands of dollars. But despite all this engineering, because of natural wear and tear, any tire's properties changes over time. It goes from being a well-performing tire like that to something which loses traction with the roads and leads to a lot of accidents. To avoid such accidents, the US government mandates a minimum thickness of rubber below which it's illegal to use the tire. But the only way we actually measure tire wear today is either by visual inspection by just looking at the tire or by inserting a ruler and reading of the value. The, uh, the, both these approaches are highly inconvenient and that is why we measure it only sporadically. From the perspective of safety, this is bad. We want our measurements to be obtained in a continuous periodic fashion. Now let's assume for an instant that there is already a sensor which reports continuous tire wear data. Knowing this, we would not only stay safe, but it would also open other opportunities such as managing fleets of trucks more efficiently. What I mean by that is fleet management companies can look at the tire wear data, analyze it and plan their fueling and maintenance costs, thus boosting their efficiency. This is why we believe that a sensor which measures tire wear is almost as necessary as the one which measures pressure today, which is ubiquitous in all automobiles today. Let's first look at a few approaches and how they perform. We already know that manual sensing is inconvenient. Now there are other sort of solutions which involves embedding some sort of electronics in the tire. These could be RFID tags or some electronics which measures the resistance and the capacitance between two terminals. But the main catch is that these electronics have to be embedded during the manufacturing process itself and making changes to an existing manufacturing line can be expensive. There are other solutions which the industry is rallying behind and calling it as smart tire solutions. This is basically a tire pressure sensor and a bunch of dynamical models built around it to indirectly tell what the tire wear is. Of course, the accuracy of these are just limited by the ability of the models. Lastly, there is another solution which involves you driving into a garage, getting your car cleaned and laser scanning the solution. While laser scans can be extremely accurate, the main killer is debris. Any amount of debris which is left uncleaned will cause the laser scans to be completely useless. Thus, we have the four important characteristics for our system, which is it needs to report accurate data in a convenient manner, it should not have any sort of electronics embedded in the tire and it should be robust to the accumulation of road debris. Now let's start thinking about this from the perspective of a laser scanning solution. We already know that the laser scanning solution is accurate and free of all sorts of electronics in the tire. By just moving the laser scanner from down there to the tire well and building a system around it, we can get convenient measurements. But in the presence of debris, laser cannot penetrate. However, we know that RF signals, radio frequency signals can penetrate debris. This is what we propose. Replace this laser with RF uh, signal source and um, do a laser-like operation using RF signals. 
But unfortunately, to get laser-like accuracy with RF signals, you need either a very wide bandwidth RF signal or hardware which has very fine timing resolution. Fortunately, a close look at today's radio sensors reveals that there exists something called as millimeter wave radars which are extremely commonplace and used for a variety of applications. These radars have one of the widest bandwidths across all radio systems and this holds promise for offering laser-like accuracy. We now introduce our system. It's essentially a millimeter wave radar mounted in the tire well. The radar blasts signals at the tire and observes reflection. Upon processing these reflections, the radar estimates what the surface range and the grooves range is and simply subtracts the two to obtain tire wear or tread depth. This work is in joint collaboration with Bridgestone and we name this Osprey because very much like the bird which gauges how deep the fish is before catching it and it gauges it accurately overcoming effects of refraction and so on, we also gauge what the thickness of the rubber is overcoming the uh, impact of debris. The two main challenges we face are as follows. The first one is that the tread depths vary all the way from 2 mm to 20 mm. 2 mm for completely worn out tyres which is almost at the legal limit and 20 mm for brand new off the shelf truck tyres. This range is an order of magnitude smaller than the resolving capability of radars today. What I mean by that is that the surface and the grooves reflection cannot be distinguished by any radar which is out there today. To add to this, in the presence of debris, the radar cannot even distinguish between the groove's reflection and the debris's reflection. So both these challenges result in ambiguous measurements at the radar and this is precisely why we have to solve these first. Let's first look at why the first challenge is so important. Typically, radars uh, resolve the targets along the range axis. What I mean by that is, two targets can be resolved if their echoes are separated by a certain time delay. This time delay depends on the pulse width of the radar's pulse. If the time delay is greater than C tau by 2, then the radar sees it as two different echoes and there is no ambiguity. But if the time delay is smaller, the echoes merge together and the ambiguity arises. And because pulse width and bandwidth of, a of any signal is inversely related to each other, the range resolution has this popularly known formula of C by 2b. Other fancier radars can also localize targets along the azimuth or the elevation axis. They do so by just using antenna arrays. Longer the length of this antenna array, finer the beam becomes and finer the azimuth resolution. For our case, we have 4 GHz of bandwidth in millimeter wave frequency and an azimuth resolution arising from 8 antennas of 15 degrees. The 4 GHz of bandwidth gives us 3.75 cm range resolution. So our objective is to use this and somehow resolve the surface and the groove along any one of these axes. But to put things in perspective, the surface and the groove are only separated by 2 mm to 20 mm along the range axis and just 2 degrees along the azimuth axis. This is the challenge we aim to address. We know that bandwidth is a hardware limitation and things like that, but we have already seen rich literature in the past making use of the phase of these signals to achieve millimeter resolution. Another idea is that by theoretically increasing the antenna aperture, we can get very fine azimuth resolution. In fact, this is the exact same trick used in a very popular use case of image, radar imaging which is the satellite terrain mapping. It generates high fidelity images while having a constant beam width and bandwidth. It works by collecting multiple measurements over a coherent processing interval and processing them together. What I mean by that is, this point is in the view of the radar for an extended period of time not just once that the radar sees this point. This is why the radar can use all the end samples to image this particular point. Moreover, the radar knows precise relationships between R1, R2 and so on up to Rn. Leveraging this, it almost looks like n samples collected at n different time snapshots or equivalent to an n element antenna array. This is in fact 
known as the synthetic aperture antenna array. Longer the length of this antenna array, finer the resolution becomes. Almost very similar to that, in our context, we make use of the rotation of the tire. Points on the tire are under the view of the radar for an extended period of time. Hence, the radar can make use of all these uh, reflections that it gets from the same point over its trajectory and image it. All we need is either the radar moving or the target moving with a known trajectory. When the target is moving, it's called as the inverse synthetic aperture radar. Now let's define our algorithm more concretely for our case. The radar is placed in front of the tire at a certain distance d along x-axis. Our objective is to find two radiuses corresponding to the surface and the groove and simply subtract the two to obtain tire wear. Let's consider an imaginary point which is on the radar and observe how its reflections changes as it rotates. Obviously, the distance from the point to the radar changes as it rotates and this is why we encapsulate the distance changing in this channel model. Don't be bogged down by the uh, number of symbols that are there on the screen right now, but just focus on the blue and the yellow part. The blue part contains a lambda term. It has rich phase information and lambda for us is millimeter wave frequency, which wraps around in millimeter scale. And there is the yellow part, which is the traditional term used for all sorts of ranging. And this is how we get the 3.75 centimeter. But if we make use of the blue term, which is already well explored in literature, we can combine the two to obtain millimeter resolution. By simply arranging these vectors, which we get from 1 through n as the point rotates around the tire into this matrix, we have a representation for signals obtained from this particular point at the radar. Now, there is not just one point, there are multiple points. So all of these superpose together with noise and result in the received matrix at the radar. Now to find out the influence of one particular point, this is what we mean by imaging a point. Find out the influence of one particular point on the received image. We construct a similar matrix called H temp i. What I mean by that is consider the ith point from its initial location, find out how its trajectory changes and create channel models for what it would be. Populate this matrix. Now once we have h receive and h temp i, our ultimate objective is to find its contribution. What I mean by that is simply projecting h receive along h temp i. More concretely, taking the dot products of h temp i and h receive and summing it across, across rows and columns. Now this process is for i. You can iterate over different possible i values and generate a full scale ISAR image. But to move from the ISAR image to tire wear, there is, a, there, there is another step involved. Remember, all we need is two radii, one corresponding to the surface and the groove. First, let's look at what an ISAR image would look like when imaged at this particular portion of the tire. We see strong thread-like patterns appearing even in the ISAR image. In fact, when we search over different radius values, the radius values which corresponds to the maximum correlation with tire thread patterns is the radius corresponding to the surface. So together with some sort of pattern matching and inverse synthetic aperture radar imaging, we help we identify what the surface's radius is. But unfortunately, the groove doesn't have any such features for us to lock on to. The groove is featureless. Moreover, in the impact of debris, the groove's reflections will be dominated by the debris's reflections. So what we propose is to make the groove feature rich. One way to do make it get feature rich is to boost its received signal strength over and above the debris. One way to do that is by ensuring that the artificially laid out patterns or the structures in the groove are made out of a certain material. We explore different materials and not surprisingly we find metallic elements, more specifically aluminium to be highly reflective to the radar signal. So we lay out aluminium strips in the groove and so that the radar's reflection from the aluminium strips is much stronger than the debris reflection. To be resilient to higher levels of debris, 
we encode the aluminum strips in a a priori known pattern which is already known to the radar. Now this pattern is physically realized using pulse width modulation of the aluminum strips. We use pulse width modulation because pulse width modulation maximizes the reflectivity, maximizes the amount of metal surface on the tire. We use it for both representing 1 and 0, 1 with a smaller width and 0 with a larger width. Now finally, coming to the decoding step, this is exactly similar to the surface imaging wherein we construct an HTEMP-C, which is the HTEMP-C matrix corresponding to the code. We vary it across the radii values and similarly, we do a summation across a uh, uh, dot product across different elements and sum it over. The maximum correlation point indicates where, as, where our radius for the group lies. So in an overview, Osprey essentially embeds millimeter wave radars in the tire well. The radar blasts signals at the tire and observes reflection. In the tire, Osprey lays out aluminum strips uh, which are pulse width modulated and emulating a spatial code. On the software side, we uh, do uh, inverse synthetic aperture imaging and we obtain the surface and the groove radius and simply subtract the two. We implement our system on a mechanical rig. The rig consists of a turntable which is driven by a motor driver and the radar is kept at a fixed distance in front of the tire to mimic tire wells situation. Please do come check out our demo on this Thursday and chat with us in our Zoom room. We implement, also implement our system and evaluate it on commercial real world cars. Uh, this is a picture of our system attached to a Honda Odyssey 2019 edition. Today we would like to discuss two important results. First, the variation of tire wear error across speeds. Uh, we vary uh, the speed of rotation all the way from 0.62 to 5.45 km per hour and the true tread depth from 8.75 which is the default tread depth of the tire all the way down to 1.7 mm which is at the legal limit. We see that the tire wear error increases slightly with increase in speed which is as expected and more importantly we see that a maximum mean error of 1.5 mm is observed by our system. Another result which we would like to share is the amount of resilience we have against debris. So when we uh, put debris in the group and vary its levels we, and we benchmark this system against a laser based system. The laser based system has errors proportional to the debris level, but our system is much more resilient and has a maximum mean error of 1.5 mm when the debris, when the groove is completely covered. In addition, we also tackle several other real world challenges, more details on that in the full paper. In conclusion, today I presented Osprey. Osprey is a millimeter wave solution for tire wear measurement. Our setup allows for convenient and accurate sensing while being resilient to the accumulation of debris and without making use of any electronics in the tire. Thank you and I'll be happy to take any questions now.